office, we've been working on this issue for unfortunately about seven years. And uh, this is again one of many things that we've been trying to do over this period of time to stop foreclosures. Because we know that everybody loses when you have a foreclosure. That the homeowner loses, the city loses, lenders lose, everybody loses. And so this is just one more thing that we can do to try to level the playing field, but also to really encourage more loan modification. What we have is we have a situation where at the high point, that what, so what the legislation is, is the legislation takes out an exemption in the transfer tax code. There's an exemption in the transfer tax code that is for foreclosures. And so if the exemption actually uh, works properly, meaning we can create more modifications and fewer foreclosures. When foreclosures are low, like in 2005, the measure would only generate a couple hundred thousand dollars. When foreclosures are high, like in 2011, the measure would generate eight million dollars. But I think I can safely speak for all of us saying that we would hope that this measure generates not one cent because that means people are staying in their homes and people have an opportunity to stay and work with the banks to have modification. Um, as you know, we all know that not all lenders are created equally, that obviously we want to continue to work with our local lending institutions to move the ball forward on uh, modifications and that we hope that uh, this process is just one of many things that we can do to work together with them on. Uh, again, this is something that we level the playing field. So, this transfer tax would be levied at the time of the foreclosure court sale. So if you're out here on the courts and you purchase a foreclosed home, uh, you actually would pay a transfer tax. Any person purchasing a home or a piece of property on those steps would pay a transfer tax. If the lender takes back that property or purchases that property from the former owner at that time, they are not. And that's what we're saying should, should not be exempt that if a person, individual person, or a future homeowner is doing that same action that a lender is, then that should level the playing field. Both of those entities should be charged taxes. It shouldn't just be one party, but not the other. So again, what we're trying to accomplish is not to raise revenue. This is not a revenue-raising measure. It, it, we, we would all hope that zero revenue comes out of this because we are staying in our homes. We're hoping that this is, again, something that can assent lenders to work with us to modify loans, just like when we started our Don't Borrow Trouble program, and just like when we um, issued our report, really identifying where some of the issues are in the foreclosure process. We really hope that this is something that we can work on together. I'm so proud and uh, very honored to be working with Supervisor Avalos in particular on this issue, but also do want to thank uh, Supervisors Malagi, Campos, um, Mar, who's not here, and Cohen for coming on board so quickly. So thank you very much, and we're happy to answer questions at the end.